Well, it's February, the month of Valentine's. So it's time for me to say something that every internet incel has said at least once. I hate love. Don't get me wrong, I can be affectionate when I want to be. But in case you couldn't tell, in this day and age, the dating scene is absolute hell. Now when I say that, I'm not implying that every person out there is as toxic as a rattlesnake dipped in rat poison, but there are a lot of nasty people out there and you really have to be careful when finding a partner. All that being said, we actually have it pretty good when it comes to relationships. I mean, we could be the subject of today's video. If you were to travel back in time to the late Cretaceous period of Kansas, you'd likely be walking along a rocky coastline. While the ocean view would be incredible in and of itself, your gaze may be drawn to the pterosaurs flying overhead. This would include one of the region's largest and most tragic, the Geosternbergia. Discovered in 1952, the first fossils of this animal were unearthed from chalk deposits in the Neobrara Formation. Like I said, Geosternbergia was one of the largest pterosaurs in the region, with their wingspans being anywhere from 9.8 to 19.7 feet across, or 3.9 meters for those who use the metric system. We also know that these pterosaurs look drastically different from one another in terms of gender. Males were larger and had enormous head crests, while females were smaller and basically had a stump for a headpiece. Geosternbergia was identified as a pterodactyloid pterosaur, related to animals like Tethydraco and the famous Pteranodon. In fact, they're so closely related that, when it was first discovered, Geosternbergia was named Pteranodon sternbergi, since researchers thought they were so similar. However, this has been contested since there are a number of differences between the two animals, and a lot of researchers consider Geosternbergia to be a valid genus in itself. And honestly, when you look at their skeletons, you can see their biggest difference. Pteranodon had a large, backswept crest that somewhat resembles a scimitar in appearance. Geosternbergia, however, had a crest that's more rectangular and curves forwards. That said, these two are very much alike. They both have the same body plan, the same hat used to attract females, and the same toothless beak. Speaking of that beak, Geosternbergia were piscivores and mainly fed on fish and squid in the western interior seaway. Now, they can't skim feed like in some early depictions, but it's believed that they would fly over the shallow sea and dive bomb their prey from the air, much like modern seabirds like gannets. This means Jurassic World's pterosaurs diving into the Mosasaur Lagoon was scientifically accurate, although if it were 100%, moody British assistants wouldn't be on the menu. The problem is, getting seafood fresh from the source often comes with the risk of becoming the catch of the day. While there's currently no evidence of Geosternbergia getting snatched, at least that I've found, that doesn't mean that this ocean was safe for a seafaring pterosaur. Fossils of Pteranodon are sometimes found with shark teeth embedded in them, specifically those of Cretoxy rhina. The flamboyant cousin of Pteranodon also runs the risk of getting swallowed whole by a Xyphactinus, or getting smacked and attacked by a Tylosaurus. Watch my Halloween video if you didn't take my meaning. But for all the hell that Geosternbergia went through out at sea, it didn't end when they went back home. Especially if they were a male. You see, we have hundreds of specimens of these pterosaurs, and we learn that female Geosternbergia specimens are way more common than male specimens. This indicates that these pterosaurs had a polygonous mating system where large groups of females would be competed over by fewer, larger males. And this is where you're gonna see that being born a Geosternbergia means that your love life has more drama than real housewives. Now, polygamous relationships are nothing new in the animal kingdom, and they're commonly seen in pinnipeds, like seals and sea lions. And perhaps the most violent example of polyamorous peril is the elephant seal. Dominant male elephant seals are known as beach masters because this guy will fight anyone to keep his ladies to himself. These battles are brutal and bloody, and neither male walks away without a scar as a badge of courage. Hell, sometimes males don't even walk away at all because, well, now, we don't know how brutal Geosternbergia's conflicts were, but considering males were several times larger than the girls, the guys were probably ready to throw wings on sight. 
Keep in mind, these pterosaurs have a skull that's over three feet long, and a majority of that is a sharp pointed beak that can do egregious damage if used correctly. Just off the top of my head, possible injuries from these fights could include torn tendons, gouged out eyes, massive puncture wounds, and torn wing membranes. And considering pterosaurs need those membranes to fly, a duel would almost certainly cripple the loser for life. And the troubles don't just stop with fights. In a majority of modern animals, there are a lot of problems with polygony. For one, having a harem often restricts genetic diversity, because there's only one male contributing to siring offspring. Speaking of the young, whenever a new male takes over a harem, their first order of business is to eliminate any kids the previous male may have left behind. Even if the old male isn't banished, he's still gonna have to force his own sons to leave the family to start lives of their own. Was Geosternbergia like this? Well, like I said, we don't have a living colony of these things to confirm it, but it's definitely a maybe. That said, there is one polygony problem that Geosternbergia may have encountered. Serial cheating. Some subordinate males can and will get their moments to mate with the females when the dominant male's back is turned. Some of these younger males can even carry features that make them look like a female, so they can sneak into the harem unnoticed. As for the females themselves, they aren't loyal, and they'll mate with whoever they want, whenever they want. Sound familiar? So as you can see, being a male Geosternbergia means you get cheated on without realizing it, you may have to commit infanticide, you only get one party of friends to hang out with, and you're always ready to lay down the law with a guy who looked at your girl for more than two seconds. Our dating problems don't seem so bad now, do they? But yeah, that's the end of the line for this video. Don't forget to leave a like and a comment on this video as it encourages me to make more content for you all in the future. Hope every couple watching this is having a wonderful Valentine's Day. And if you aren't in a relationship or have been in a bad one, my apologies, today probably isn't the best day for you. As they say, there are many more fish in the sea, it just make sure you're not dating a sea snake by mistake. Alright, that's it for now. See you around.